Welcome to our online service. Today we continue our journey through the season of Epiphany, exploring the revelation of God in Christ. In today's passage, we find Jesus gathering disciples, people who see that he is, or might be, the long-awaited Messiah, and who go to share the good news with their friends. One of those friends is Nathaniel. He begins with complete scepticism, but he's won over by a personal epiphany. And that epiphany is brought about by the revelation of God's power to know us, as we really are, and not what we might seem to the world. So as our service continues, we say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear now the words of this week's Collect. Lord, as you called the disciples, open our ears to your calling, open our eyes to your presence, open our hearts to your love, that we may hear you, and hearing you may love you, and loving you may serve you, whom to serve is perfect freedom, through Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Amen. Rosie is going to read this week's Gospel. A reading from the Gospel of John. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. One of the important ways of reading today's passage is to see it as an invitation. Like the disciples, we're invited to come and see, to enter the divine mystery, to find and be in the presence of God, to be a disciple and to make other disciples. But today I want to explore something else in the passage, and it's the idea of being seen, being known. It's a message that I think has particular resonance in this time of isolation and loss, and when our world seems to be increasingly torn apart by violence and intolerance. I'm sure I'm not the only one who feels that our world is full of conflict. Brexit, transgender rights, Black Lives Matter, toppling statues, are just some of the flashpoints in public and private discourse, with different points of view becoming more and more polarised and the debate less nuanced. Social media channel us towards what we already believe, rather than exposing us to alternative views and available evidence. Anger and outrage often seem to be a substitute for thoughtful engagement with a range of arguments and perspectives. And some of that conflict, of course, we saw acted out last week in Washington, D.C. What was shocking in those scenes was not just the violence and mayhem aimed at disrupting a constitutional process, but that they were driven by a rhetoric of vitriol and incitement, even though the underlying claims were unsubstantiated and refutable. And we can also see something of this polarisation in the current pandemic. We look at the pictures of medical staff who are facing their worst nightmares every day. We remember friends, family and neighbours who have been and continue to be directly affected by the virus. 
but we also see how some people brush aside the potential effects of COVID and the need to care for others. How others deny its very existence, even demonstrating outside hospitals where exhausted doctors and nurses try to sleep. But I think the passage today reminds us that those involved in all of these events, all who troll others on social media, who threaten and bluster and disparage those who don't agree with them, all of them are children of God. God knows them, and I think he calls us to know them too. Now, you'll probably have noticed that I have so far used the word them, but in reality there are very few of us who can claim that we never make assumptions and never judge, never feel angry or even hatred. We all experience fear. The fear of change, the fear of the future, the fear of loss, the fear of the other. And that common understanding of human emotion perhaps gives us the basis on which to engage with arguments that don't naturally appeal to us, to try to see opposing points of view. But today's Gospel demands of us something far more powerful, more radical, it's not about persuading others to join your camp. It's not about winning over disciples who will follow you wherever you go, even over the barricades. It's about knowing others. It's about seeing and knowing what is in their hearts, without judgment, without interpreting or explaining, just knowing. Now, this is not to say that we have to agree with each other. We may find it impossible not to judge. But we can begin by understanding that we're all children of God, that none of us start off more righteous than another, that true reconciliation demands that we start with respect and an attempt at understanding. And I think something else happens here. By trying to know others as God knows them, we also begin to know ourselves. And that experience is just as searing, just as searching, just as challenging as the task of knowing others. So that invitation to come and see, to have our eyes open to the reality of Christ, is an offer of revelation. We tend to assume that the revelation in today's passage is the revelation of God in Christ. But Nathaniel's realisation that Christ already knew him before their encounter is also revelation. It is a revelation of the loving power of God to know us, to understand us, to refuse to be distracted by our strengths or our weaknesses. And perhaps this is the revelation that we are most inclined to forget. That God's knowing reveals us to ourselves. That the invitation is to see ourselves as God sees us and to know ourselves to be loved by God.
Ashley is going to lead us now in prayer. Let us pray. The response to draw us closer is closer to the heart of God. Let us pray to God who knows us better than we know ourselves and understands our world. Lord, we know we are called to be the body of Christ. Make us worthy of that calling, fervent in our prayer and worship, loving, faithful and honest in our lives, so that the whole church displays what God is like. Draw us closer, closer to the heart of God. We pray for the grace and wisdom to care for this world that we have been given as our home, for perception in the difficult decisions and commitment to justice and peace. Draw us closer, closer to the heart of God. We pray for the homes of this benefice, whose hopes and struggles, sorrows and fears are already known to you. May each household be blessed as we pray, and may your love fill each life. Draw us closer, closer to the heart of God. We pray for all who do not yet know you, for all whose hearts are poisoned with hate or weighed down with despair. May your light scatter their darkness and bring them hope and healing. Draw us closer, closer to the heart of God. We pray for those who have died to this life and are born into your heaven. Comfort those who miss their physical presence and bring us all to share in the fullness of your life. Draw us closer, closer to the heart of God. We give you thanks for all that points us towards the beauty of your love and draws us closer to you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now we come to the peace. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. Peace, peace be, be with, with you. you. Stay safe, everyone, and peace be with you. Peace be with you. Thank you for joining us for this service today. Because we're now in Tier 4, our PCCs have decided to suspend public worship but we will continue to offer recorded services each Sunday. Details are on the bulletin and the Benefice website. As before, all of our churches are open on Sundays between 10am and 4pm for personal prayer and private reflection. And Mark and I will continue to say communion on behalf of the Benefice in our studies each Sunday at 10am. We hope to see some of you for coffee in the Benefice Zoom room at 11am on Sundays and Wednesdays. Details of how to join are also on this week's bulletin. And so our service ends now with a blessing. May God the Father, who called you to follow his Son, our Lord Jesus, reveal to you through the Holy Spirit the fullness of God's majesty and glory. And as you walk in the footsteps of Jesus, may you know yourself to be loved protected and redeemed. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.